Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Thanks for spending some time here on your Sunday. We've got uh, on the panel today, we've got Mr. Ken Golden, owner and proprietor of The Laser's Edge and Morning. featured featured uh, member of In the Prog Seat every week. And uh, we've got George Lemay, also from In the Prog Seat and for Fusion Friday. So uh, good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? How are you doing? Morning. Cool. We're going to talk about a Dan that I guarantee you uh, a good chunk of the people who will be watching this program have no idea who they are. Uh, and so today is uh, let's learn a little bit about a band that you should have on your radar. The band is the French trio, instrumental, mostly instrumental, uh, Prague, metal, fusion, avant-garde. I don't I never know what to call them. The band is called Morgelbull, M-O-R-G-L-B-L. Uh, like I said, they are from France. Uh, Ken has a very, very long history with this band. They are assigned to his label. And uh, before we get started in the ranking of the seven studio albums, Ken's going to give us a little kind of little history and a little bit of information about the band and because uh, he's got very close ties with them. So, Ken, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. You know, originally Pete said, hey, let's do a ranking the Kiss uh, albums. And I said, no, how about we do Morgable instead? And Pete said, that's a great idea. Let's do Morgable. So um, I go. I can't count back. on you for a Kiss ranking, Ken. I'm disappointed. I'll I'll bone up on it, man. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll do my best. You know, right. can we confine it to the '70s, or do we go into the disco era? <laughs> There's no disco era, but okay, yeah, '70s is fine. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I came across. I was actually introduced to Morgable by uh, Ron Bumblefoot Thal. Ron's a friend of mine, and he was friendly with. Uh, guitarist Christoph Godin, who is the guitarist in Morgable. They have both endorses of VGA guitars, which are made in France. Beautiful, uh, beautiful guitars. And Ron said, hey, I think you might like these guys. And Ron actually had some copies of their, uh, of one of their albums, which I will hold up here. Uh, this was uh, Bienvenue à Morgable Land. And I thought this was peculiar. I don't think it'll come across. Well, maybe. You could see that, I mean, these guys are dressed up like clowns. I mean, it was, and uh, <clears throat> that intrigued me. And he was telling me stories about these guys uh, that they would do stuff like crazy stuff. Like they would, like they would cook food on stage while they were performing. And I, I was very intrigued. And uh, so anyway, Ron, Ron gave me a bunch of CDs to sell. And uh, I, and I was totally into the music. The band did a couple of albums. And uh, they broke up and they were, uh, they didn't, uh, it was, oh, I should also mention it's Christophe Godin on guitar. It's Yvonne Rooney on bass. And when they started, it was Jean-Pierre Frelizot on drums. And he was later replaced by Aurelian uh, Uz uh, Elias. So, uh, and again, apologies to any French speaking people because I'm going to just assassinate your language. And people's names, but um, that goes for all three of us today. Yeah, so. I mean, so <clears throat> I was very, I was very interested in the band, but they didn't really exist. And then they reformed, found out they were working on something, and I was in touch with Christoph, and I found out they were playing the they were playing the Headway Festival in um, outside Amsterdam in Amstelveen, and so I went over there to see them perform. And uh, also on the bill was some of my other bands. Redemption was playing, Zero Hour was playing. It was a great lineup. Um, uh, Sleep Time Gorilla Museum was playing. Anyway, so it was like, yeah, twist my arm. Let's go. Let's go see Morgable. So I saw them. Absolutely blew my mind. Just one of the most incredible live performances I've ever seen. And uh, you know, we worked out a deal. Christoph said, yeah, okay, let's do it. And uh, I started releasing. I started releasing their albums. And uh, the first one I did, I guess, was Grotesque, which came out in 2007. And uh, they've come over here and toured from time to time. They performed at Nearfest, and they were the opening band on Sunday morning um, at, in Nearfest. And they, it was the first time that an opening act ever got two encores. Uh, they just blew the audience away. And they when they can they come over here they like touring here and uh, they've been over a number of times it's been a while but you know they've put out a body a consistent body of work since uh since they reformed in 2007 
So uh, what else can I tell you? They're they're super nice guys. I love them. I love them like brothers. So yeah. are they considered active now? I well, right now, right now, the three of them are uh, touring with Maggie Lloyd, vocalist. She's a great, very soulful singer. Not your traditional like high pitched soprano or something like like a Sharon Denadel or, or Charlotte Wessels. Uh, they have a band called The Prize. And it's more of a hard rock, little touches of AOR. It's in more in that direction. It's not like a, a jazz rock thing with a singer. It's not, it's not a jazz metal, you know, they're just playing a different kind of music. I I haven't discussed it with them because they're really focused on the prize, but I have a feeling we're not done with Morgan Ball. I think I th I think the I think the idea is for the two of the things to coexist. And uh, this is their focus, trying to trying to maybe make some money. I, I don't know. Hopefully they are. So, well, they're very active. They, they're, they're playing a lot. They're, 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 I think they've played some festivals and, uh, you know, when you see these guys play, it's, it's incredibly impressive. So, yeah. Cool. So there's the history uh, of Morgable. Now let's get to the albums. So seven albums, we're going to somehow attempt to rank these. We, we've been talking all week about how difficult this is. I will preface this ranking by saying uh, from a personal perspective, my ranking could change at any time. There are no clunkers in this catalog. There's almost nothing that separates most of these albums. Uh, yeah. They're all pretty damn amazing start to finish. Uh, there's a there's a consistency across the catalog uh, that if you were to take, a, for me anyway, take a lot of these tunes and throw them up in the air and have them land in different albums you probably wouldn't notice because they're all they all contain certain elements they're all a little bit different but a little similar and uh no bad albums at all so putting them in some kind of order was kind of torturous for me and i think from these two guys as well but the worst morgable album is better than anything else you're going to listen to today <laughs> yeah that's, that's really true. true that's true it's really true you know? that's true. And, 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 and yeah and the thing the thing that's great about morgable i think is that these are very cohesive pieces i mean the musicianship is insane right but that's I mean, but that's that could be boring i mean these guys they write hooks i mean they they make the music interesting and uh and yeah the, 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 you, you get sucked in very easily all right george and asher are going to start us off with uh, number seven at number seven is the debut, The Morgable Trail. Um, long out of print. Uh, the thing with this one for me is get, it's got some of the earmarks of the uh, a debut album. It's they may be quite haven't quite found their way yet. Uh, they're trying to appeal to cover a lot of bases of the things they want to do. Um, you got like three, not three track three tracks that are not really songs. You got uh, acoustic uh, things that they wanted to get in. It's kind of a up and down kind of a thing. There's great songs on here. Streets and Traps is my favorite. Uh, Principles of Life is really good. Uh, Lieutenant Columbine. But uh, also the production is the only one that I would say is not top flight production. It's, it's a debut record in every sense for me. So it's just a little bit less than what comes after. So, debut. Ken. Well, I could tell, yeah, we're not going to agree. I don't think the three of us, you know, like Pete, when you and I did anecdote, we were very close. Yes. You know, this, we're going to be all over the map here. Well, we, we, we said that though a couple of days ago. We were like, yeah, no, we we're going to be all over the map on this. And that's, that's okay. That's okay. So, uh, my number seven uh, is Tea Time for Punks. I give it three ribs. Uh, some good humor, incredible playing that goes without saying. It's just, for me, just overall, the, the tunes are just not quite as memorable. Uh, I, I can't say why. It, I think it's a magnificent album, but I have to rank these. So Tea Time for Punks, that's, that's, that's at the bottom of the list for me. And uh, <clears throat> as I said, yeah, I give it three ribs. Three yeah, ribs is pretty, three ribs place, is pretty so. good. That's a pretty good lunch, three ribs. Yes. So. Yeah, we're going to be all, more on that later. We're going to be all over the place on this, and that's 
I knew, I knew this going in. All right, so my number seven, uh, and I have uh, Ken reissued the first two albums on Free Electric Sound as part of a two-disc set called uh, Tunes, Tunes from the Past, which has the first two albums on it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with number seven, uh, Ben Venu, uh, Morgable Lands from 1999, the second album. Again, jam-packed with all sorts of styles and flavors, killer stuff. Something's got to go at number seven, right? Uh, this is this is terrific stuff. There's some absolutely mind blowing guitar work on here. I I really like how uh, he incorporates like absolutely crushing metal riffs with like this wacky like Frank Zappa, Steve Vai sense of humor and off kilter arrangements and this these avant garde things and these little jazzy bits and you got some prog and some flamenco. It's like, it's all over the map. And I know for some people that's gonna be a little weird to listen to, but to me, it just, every song and every album kind of takes you on a different journey. I think that's what's so great about this band. Um, I mean, there's some, I, I can never pronounce half the stuff on here, but uh, Pecno, Techno Boy, is terrific again that reminds me of very early steve i uh scapid glow leg at bambala or whatever however the hell you say that i mean just a complete blazer i mean from start to finish so good uh layage day Aiveil, whatever is kind of nice and jazzy it's kind of mellow i dig that uh la fantome de savoy is just really really crazy and complex and then you got the funky metal of uh tunes tunes which is a lot of fun i don't know it's a great album it pains me to have it at number seven, but like I said, something's got to go there. So uh, second album, Benvenue a Morgable Land is my number seven. Back to George. Number six, I don't own. It's just the story of Scott Rohde. Uh, it's a good album. Uh, I think for me, maybe it's the place in the discog. Like at this point, it's the seventh album I have by them. So maybe there's a little bit of I've heard some of this before. Uh, I think it's their best production. Uh, yeah. Incredible sounding record. But maybe I just think uh, there's less songs that reach out and grab me on this as opposed to some of the other ones. So I'd slot it in at number six. You think well, that's sort of how I felt with Tea Time for Punks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're just, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, well, Scott Rudy ranks hard for me, but um, anyway. You also one to two, George, maybe because you don't have the history with it yet. I did have it early on. I had files of it and I just, it never caught on and I kind of, it slipped by the wayside with me, but I did, I, in the revisit this week, I did appreciate it more. So maybe. Yeah. That's, that's the, the problem with doing like these rankings sometimes with bands that are still active uh, and you're looking at albums that were released, you know, a decade or more ago. And then the stuff that was released within the last couple of years, it's like, you may really like the album, but you don't have all those years of listening to it and loving it yet, right? That's that's why I sometimes say if we were to do this again in three years, uh, you know, and maybe they come out with another album in that time span, our rankings might be completely different by then, right? So it's tough. It's tough. Ken, what do you got for number six? All right. So number six, <laughs> to give three and a half ribs to Grotesque. It's great. It's heavy, but um, it's got it's got a, a few a few slower pieces but uh but this great song uh, lieutenant uh, columbin just i don't know i i could you know the, the song titles are kind of meaningless <laughs> of the album and i can't pronounce them well anyway but uh you know again grotesque just absolutely amazing record um uh, I, I love it no no agony listening to it uh, actually, there's a little video clip. We have a little video clip on here. Uh, this one is, I think, grotesque is out of print now, but um, grotesque. That's my number six. My number six as well. Uh, this is the only one that before when we decided we were going to do this, the only one I did not have a hard copy of. I've since rectified that and I have one on order because it is out of print. It's hard to find, but I got one uh, from the UK. Uh, third album, uh, again, to me, this is their kind of like... Um, their weird funky album. Like there's lots of cool metallic funk all throughout this album, like Tapas Nocturne. Uh, it's got all this weird guitar, you know, solos and kind of like off kilter riffing going on, you know, killer drums on the whole album. Uh, you got, uh, geez, Leami Deglingo. 
trying to pronounce these titles is crazy. Um, Le Project P. De Bichet, right? It's got uh, all sort again, more kind of funky riffs going on here. The Toy Maker is a great track. Uh, Total Recall is, is completely wild. LA's, he, he, he uses um, a lot of his tones uh, on guitar are really, really cool. And he utilizes effects pedals in a very interesting way. Like he, I'm a big wah-wah guy. And when he kicks on the wah-wah pedal, I'm interested and in listening intently. Uh, he uses it really, really nicely on this album, especially because, I, like I said, I think there's there's a lot more funk tones on this album, and, and he uses the wah-wah pedal a little bit more. It makes sense. So, uh, but yeah, really, really great album. Again, a lot of fun, um, but it came in at number six for me, so grotesque. You know, you know what it is for me, Pete? I think I, I, I recognize all the riffs. And the, you know, the melodies, I don't necessarily always associate them with a particular song title. So, you it's know, so yeah. I, I've heard these songs so many times, you know, to the point of, you know, to the point of like, I don't want to hear this for a while, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, you could, I could listen to something and, and go, oh, my God. Oh, that's the toy maker. OK, that's the toy. Right, you listen to it. You're like, oh, this one's good. What's it called again? Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. It will exactly. It's, particularly when it's when you're dealing with an instrumental album. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah that's a great point yeah for sure it's it's almost like you have to take these albums as a whole it's it's really hard to like pick out songs and things and, yeah the other thing is uh, yeah take it off i don't want to take these albums off when i once i put them on man i, I i'm, I'm in gotta for hear the, them all the way through right i'm, yeah. I'm in for the full ride yeah so. exactly and you know we we made, <laughs> we made some comments a couple days ago actually about the last 24 48 hours because we've been listening obviously the three of us to this stuff a lot lately and it's almost like because these albums are so intense and we've been listening to them so much after today's show we probably don't need to listen to morgable for a while because it's like it's a lot of uh it's a lot of energy you have to put into going you know listening to these back you know from start to finish album after album after album over a span of a couple of weeks so it's like it, it it almost takes a lot out of you right it's, it's you know there's one thing about morgable about their studio albums you know a lot of bands have a hard time uh capturing the energy that they have on the on the live stage and morgable's live performances are you know off the charts i find that they're they have been able to get a lot of that energy in this in the studio recordings yeah so uh, they're, they're not dead albums, man. It's not, like I said, there's there's a vibrancy to the thing, you know? There's, yeah, there's an intensity. You can almost picture them in the studio jumping all over the place and crashing into walls. And yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is very exciting music. Very, yeah. There's no boring, you know, atmospheric, little jazz, jazzy noodling going on in these albums at all. I mean, this is, this is top-notch stuff. They, so. they should be bigger than they are. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. All right. Uh, number five. What do you got, George? I got uh, Tea Time for Punks, which I just had digitally. Um, it's a little bit amalgamous, kind of like Scott Rohde. Uh, I, again, I liked it better this week than I I hadn't put it on in a while. And I, I did like it better this week, uh, actually to a fairly good degree. But uh, Comparison to the the ones from here on out, which are all buy or die, it's a little bit below. So I got that at number five. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, I've given three and a half ribs to Brutal Romance. Uh, it's kind of, I, it has some great, great songs on here. Uh, I can't just throw in titles out. That doesn't mean anything. I know them all. Uh, it, it's I find it, it kind of a little light and breezy in places. It's got some like Latin and Middle Eastern rhythms, and melodies. So you get a little more contrast. It has some of my favorite songs. So <clears throat> the whole the whole shtick I've been mentioning, Ribs, there's a song on here called Golden Ribs, and it's named after me. So uh, whenever the band would come on tour, they would and they were doing shows in the Northeast area they would use my home as a base and they're wonderful house guests and uh, they wash my car, they do my laundry, you know, put them to work. Now they're super, they're, they're, they're great to have around a lot of fun and, and wonderful people. And I always cook for them and barbecue is, is my hobby and I'm very good at it. And every time they come here and stay here, they always ask for my ribs. So uh, when Brutal Romance came out, I was, Shocked to find that there was a song on there called Golden Ribs. 
So that's, uh, so yeah, that's, and that's one of my favorite songs on the album. So, uh, and it's, there it's, a, they, they play it, they usually play it and, uh, and I give it three and a half ribs. There you go. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with the debut. Uh, again, I have the uh, tunes, tunes from the <clears> last, um, collection the mortable trio from 98 uh you know I, I agree with george i think uh production wise this is probably the the least good sounding is that, is that a term i don't know uh you get it's it's a it's a debut album and there's a lot of uh there's a lot of variety on this album like they're trying to kind of find their way uh perhaps you know and a lot of their albums have different feels and different styles and whatnot, but I think this album's got a little bit more than that. It's still great stuff. I mean, it starts off, got high energy right off the bat with the tale of Thebol, which is terrific. I mean, the riffs are just brutal on this. Drumming all over the place, crazy soloing, uh, streets and, and traps, kind of, you know, like bridges, prog and metal and avant-garde. It's really great. Inside Power uh, is more fusion-y. You got Il, Il Bello de Notte, which is, shows their flamenco side which I think is awesome, right? I'm surprised they don't do more of that. Uh, Travels is great. Lieutenant Coleman is great. Strict, uh, Strickman Confidential kind of reminds me of like Alan Holdsworth's solo a little bit. You know, it's got that kind of like atmospheric little thing going on there. Really good album. Great debut. Um, I consider ranking it lower, but I there are, again, there are like a handful of tracks on this album that I think are so good. It kind of elevates it a little bit for me. So The Morgable Trio, my number five. Back to George. My number four is Beyond Venue Morgable Land. This is actually the first CD I ever bought from Ken. Um, and the last one, too. <laughs> we're hanging out on this board. There was a Dutch kid on there named Jerowen. Oh, yeah. Identified as a guy that had some taste, and he was just raving about this album. Got to get it, got to get it. So, and Ken was the only guy that had it that I knew of. So, I grabbed it and um, yeah, it delivers the goods. It's uh, an early example of someone of uh, instrumental prog with little fusion touches and just a, a whole a classy affair. The first three tunes, you get the little intro track, the goofy intro track, and then Sklapna Log or whatever. Techno Techno Boy, that's the tune, man. That That is so unique. The bass line, it's got this octaver bass line that runs through it drummer just playing quarter notes it sounds like it would be boring but man is it catchy really catchy um but yeah this, this, the whole record is some real heavy stuff it's just got that mix of stuff that just appealed to me on so many different levels so beyond vanilla mortable land cool. well for me <clears throat> four ribs bienvenue on mortable land so uh continue for me it was you know it was a continuation of the debut Lots of memorable songs, crazy playing. And, and when these first two albums came out in, in the late 90s, I mean, they just kind of hit me like a sledgehammer. You know, I, I, I really didn't know anything else that was out there that was kind of like it. I mean, yeah, you heard, you heard a little Steve Vai, a little maybe Holdsworth. You heard maybe some Primus, Zappa. It was, you know a hodgepodge of all those things thrown together. And, you know, it was unlike anything else that, that was going on at the time. It was clever and it was just really well executed. And I listened to Pecno Techno Boy and every time I hear that song, it makes me laugh. It just makes me laugh. I don't know. It's, it's great. And people shouldn't discount the first two albums. So uh, just because they were the first two or the production, as George said, they're fantastic albums. They really are. So they were, there was a band that was ahead of their time, I think. And you mentioned the the whole thing about <laughs> songs making you laugh. There, there's a whimsicalness. Is that a word? Uh, yeah, whimsy. whimsy. Is a yeah, word. It, throughout their albums, uh, which I really like a lot and I find actually pretty charming because I, I, I you get the impression that um, they don't take themselves too seriously. They know they're uber talented, uh, but they want to make these albums fun. And they really are, you know, you don't, you can't always say that about instrumental albums being fun, right? These are fun. They're fun albums to listen to. And my number four, actually, I think is the one album that maybe isn't fun like the other ones, because it's definitely moodier than all the other ones, but I like moody, heavy stuff. So that's why the story of Scott Roddy uh, appeals to me quite a bit. 
because I, I like darker type stuff. Um, and I think this kind of, to me, sticks out in their catalog as the one album that has a little bit of darker tone, a little less uh, lighthearted in delivery. And to me, it, it's a nice little change of pace, I think. Uh, definitely a heavy album. There's some heavy stuff on there. I mean, Flicks, A Miss, A Mish, or however you say that massive riffs crazy screaming guitar solos on it just really really good you got uh les Légion du room did i say that correct i don't know that's kind of real melancholy and dark it's got you know it's got really cool drums and it's atmospheric and whatnot the bass is very prevalent in the mix i like that uh dark venom is just shredding he's just christoph is shredding up a storm on there uh donor dorgasm again Big, big riffs, loads of like pinch harmonics for your guitar player and you like that sort of thing, which I do. Uh, awesome. And then Crime Minister is just crushingly heavy as well. There's a lot of good stuff on here. Um, but again, this is, if you want to hear this band a little bit darker, a little bit heavier, this is the one album I think that kind of stands out above the others in that sort of style. But uh, terrific, terrific stuff. You know, even the song titles make me laugh. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. Crime Minister, I mean, it's like... Yep. You know, it's like yeah, it's very clever. Pro Progtolic, right? Progtolic. <laughs> All right, George, back to you. The top for three. three, it's Jazz for the Deaf. I believe this is our friend Louis Nasser's favorite. Um, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I think so. Uh, despite the title, I don't hear it as any jazzier than the rest of them. And, uh, it's just another good, solid release from them. My Space Book, that's got to be my favorite tune. That's funny. The Bleach Boy, My Little Man, uh, Morgable Circus. <laughs> there was They were destined to have a song called Mor Something with Circus in it. That's a funny yeah. tune. That's a pretty funny tune. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just, super super consistent record all the way through. I saw him on this tour. We uh, sent him a beer up on stage. So they play the set. We thought, as soon as the set's over, Christoph and I have been come with a pitcher of beer. They come and sit at our table, just plant down on the table. They're like, let's drink this pitcher. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Good move to send up a beer on stage, I guess. Uh, yep. Great guys. Yeah. So I got Jazz for the Depth at number three. Cool. All right. Ken, what do you got? All right. So, uh, four ribs to the story of Scott Rohde. Uh, Pete, a lot of what you said, I, I agree with. Uh, I think it's the consist consistently the heaviest album, top to bottom. Uh, it it's a little bit of the humor is missing in spots. Yeah. It's a little, just a little bit more serious. The playing is off the charts. I have no idea what the story of Scott Rohde is about, and I don't think they do either. So I remember <laughs> asking Christoph about it, and him just kind of laughing. I, I I don't think I'm not sure it means anything. And the you know the other thing is you know, even like we say look at the cover art. When I saw that cover, I was laughing my ass off. It was it yeah. I mean it's it's yeah. They they don't they just. It's, it's, just, it's almost like they wanted to make all the cover art and, all, and everything else really funny looking, but yet the music is not quite right. So Right. The music's not, but yeah, it's like they're taking a piss with the artwork and everything. It's, it's always, it's always the case, you know, they're funny guys. Funny guys. Cool. All right. Uh, my number three is uh 2012's brutal romance. Fifth album. Uh, to me, this might be their most, I went from their least fun album to, for me, their most fun album. Uh, this is just playful, quirky, everything you want to hear from Workable, all tied up in one little package. Uh, Noki's on the block, you know, again, it's got those big metallic funky riffs. Uh, the title track is just killer. Um, there's a lot of like Frank Zappa style weirdness on this album. Uh, Les Surfer de Argentine is just quirky and all over the place. Uh, you know, Ken mentioned Golden Ribs, which is a terrific, terrific track. Uh, Fidel Gastro is loads of fun. Uh, oh, Pie Cannot Be is, you know, got these huge riffs, these big grooves with the bass and the drums. And a Metal Cartoon is also a killer as well. Uh, yeah, fun, fun album. It's my number three. Back to George. Number two is grotesque. Uh, there is some element of uh, time and place with this one because I was so happy that they came back. 
and then just hammered this album that year. I mean, played the crap out of it. And like like you said, Pete, there's more like funky kind of stuff on here, a lot of slap bass tunes that appeals to the fusion kid in me. So Tapas Nocturne went the double shot of that and uh, Leami de Glingo, both of those tunes to kick off this album. It's just, then you just settle in where it was a great listen. Uh, also, uh, Hot Voltage, that tune with the, the goofy little vocal thing in there, the hoo 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 thing. Great. <laughs> I like the disco song. Yeah, I mean, all the songs like that are the songs that appeal to me more. I, there's tons of bands I got it instrumental albums that cover the metal thing and the shred thing but the little funkier stuff they do and the little funny stuff they do it's uh those tend to be my favorite so it's number two for me nice all right my number two i don't have i don't have the for some reason i can't find it is the first album so i'll just hold this one up uh the morgable trio i give that one four and a half ribs uh, for me, it was the, you know it was basically where it all started. It's the proof of concept, and it's the sentimental favorite for me. Uh, it has a lot of songs that are still live show staples, and they always always blow me away. Like you have Christoph even playing acoustic on here. He should probably play acoustic a little more often. So uh, I enjoy hearing. But like the tale of Thibaut, which is the second track, man. I, they, they still play it. They still play a lot, a lot of stuff from the first album. And those tunes are like, they're just ingrained in me. They're like part of my DNA. So, so there's a lot of sentimentality uh, for me with the, with the debut. So I give that one four and a half ribs. Tebow is uh, someone in his family, right? <clears throat> I don't I honestly I don't know. I think he thanks somebody named Tebow on, on Grotesque or something. It could be. It could be. So... Uh, I also noticed that Lieutenant Columbin appears on two different albums. Yeah, yeah. So, so does Il Note. Uh, yep, it, exactly. Yeah, it's on the. I guess they just. I didn't. I never. Just noticed. It's on Grotesque, and it's on. And it's on the first album. So. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to update them, I guess. I do want to mention too? We haven't even talked about it. Uh, consistent band logo throughout all these releases too. Yeah. Yes. Stephen Reed, if you're watching, I know that's big with you. I, I agree. So, uh, yeah, and, and, a, and an interesting uh, logo as well. All right, my number two. Tea time for punks. Man, I I, I hear the, the opening little Middle Eastern lick from for Ban Jovi, right? Take on Bon Jovi just gets me every time. Just absolutely love it. And then the big riffs come in and the wah-wah. So it's just, ah, just killer stuff. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Rude has got these big kind of down tune riffs. Love that blazing lead guitar. His title track is just uh, intense jazz metal. I think, you know, I tend to, when I describe these guys to people, I, I use jazz metal a lot as a description. I don't, I know there isn't real no such thing as jazz metal, but that's just kind of, it just makes sense to me because that's the kind of music they play. Um, yeah, Chinese Buffet, you know, it's nice and melodic. I think that's a really cool tune to have on here. Mariachi's Burger is just shredding balls. Uh, untune that guitar is more funky stuff i mean there's so many great songs on here god shave the queen atomic tomahawk <laughs> great song titles fun stuff uh i love this album love it love it love it love it i i remember like uh ken when you sent me a copy of this uh when it first came out it was what, 2015 um i i was already into him because ken was promoting these guys to me going going way back and uh I didn't thought I, I didn't think that any of their albums could get any better than the ones I already loved from them. And then I heard this and I was like, holy cow, so good. So that's my number two. Number one, George, what do you got? Brutal Romance. I think it's the most consistent one. I think it's got the most uh stick in my head rips on it. If, like every song on here is that. I mean, Metal Cartoon might be my favorite Morgable song. It's up there. Uh, I like the drum and bass breaks in that song. Looses in the Sky is another one that's way up there for me. Um, yeah, it's, there's nothing you I can say bad about this record. This is the one I probably spin the most. So for me, that puts it at number one, through Romance. Yeah, any of these could be number one. I mean, that's, that's yeah, the great thing. It's interchangeable. <laughs> yeah. I agree, man. My number one, Jazz for the Deaf. So uh, I give it four and a half ribs. There, there are no five ribs. 
that'll be the next album. Uh, you know, uh, this was the first album with or uh, or Orel on drums, and uh, there was nothing wrong with the Jean Pierre. He was a very good drummer. I think Orel just maybe brought a little more energy to the band. Uh, but for me, again, there's a sentimentality attached to this album. It has overall for me some of their most memorable tunes. Stone of the Breast is probably my favorite mortable tune. That's the one where Christoph, he just he loses his mind. I mean, he just he plays a solo that is just the most jaw-dropping thing you'll ever hear. It, it's just Phenomenal album, top to bottom, and the monster within me. Oh man, there was just so many great songs on this album, and I get—I saw them so many times, and all of these tunes—they're just like it's just a part of me. And uh, you know, next week, next week, my number one album will be something else. It'll be Brutal Romance. You know, I'll turn—I'll turn the list upside down. But uh, why not? Yeah, for the moment, it's jazz for the deaf. A seven-way tie for number one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number one is also Jazz for the Deaf from 2009. Um, you know, George was uh, talking before about why title it Jazz for the Deaf because there's really not a lot of jazz on here. And I agree with that. I, I think maybe it's a play on uh, if they were, you know, if you play jazz to deaf people, they obviously can't hear it. So why not crank it up to 15 and play it so fucking loud that even deaf people can hear it? Maybe that's what they're going for here. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's just loads of riffarama on this album. Great lead guitar. Uh, he's cranking on the Wawa again on a few tracks on this uh, on this album, like uh, Morgable Circus, which I think is terrific. Uh, 22 ounce or 22 Oz, however you say that, is just amazing the bleach boy i love his guitar tone on that song and on this whole album really uh jazz for deaf people the monster within me it's all great hell's balls i mean yeah terrific terrific stuff and again another just wacky you know them with these weird hats and shit i mean these these album covers are just like so off the wall bizarre i mean look at this it's like you know here they're doing the again they're, they're playing on this whole like kind of like old school jazz crooner type thing but yeah there's nothing on this album that uh that represents that whatsoever but great stuff great stuff a fun catalog so by by raise of hands everybody watching how many of you are now so intrigued about this band that you're going to go out and try and find uh some of these out of print albums wherever they might be hiding somewhere out there in the world all of you great that's good to hear that means we've done our job gentlemen right so uh, if you want to hear them, I mean, all the albums are streaming. If you go to lasersedge.bandcamp.com, you can hear them all. They're all available for uh, lossless download. Uh, at our website, lasercd.com, I have some of the titles still in print. Uh, Jazz for the Deaf is still in print. Tunes, Tunes is still in print. So then you're getting the first two albums. Uh, Tea Time for Punks is not. We have a handful of copies of Brewer Romance left, and Grotesque is not. But if you do, I'll tell you this one thing. If you buy something from our website, I will include a free Christoph related CD at no charge, and it'll be a surprise. Wow. See that? So uh, we'll drop the uh, the links to both lasercd.com and the Bandcamp page in the comments below. We'll pin that at the top so it's easy to find. And uh, you won't be disappointed, folks. You won't be disappointed. And for those of you who are already fans of Morgable, uh, let us know how you would rank this catalog in the comments below. So I guarantee you every single ranking will be completely different to what we just did. And uh, that that's the way it should be. So cool. Any last words about Morgable, guys, before we go? Yeah, come back, come back, guys. Uh, I will send. Uh, I will send Christoph and the guys. I will send them uh, the link for this, and uh, we'll see what they have to say. I wanted to ask you, Ken. Do you, I know you have them all? Did you ever sell Metal Cartoon or Oral's album or Ivan's album? No, I I, I got them for myself. I mean, I might have sold Yvonne's. I don't remember. Orel's I didn't, and Metal Cartoon. We, we were actually going to do a metal cartoon uh album but that just he was work. i don't know i don't remember what happened it just kind of fell by the wayside it never it never happened because christoph was involved in all these all these different projects he he was in another band called gno gno 
uh, which I believe is still going, but he's no longer the guitarist in the band. And uh, it was sort of like, in a way, like Morgable, I guess, with vocals. Yeah. Uh, a little off the wall. Um, and um, yeah, I never had I never had them for sale. I don't think Christoph had metal cartoon uh, to sell. And uh, yeah, I just never brought in Orel because you know the problem is, I mean, how many people know Morgable? Right. Right. Think about how how few people know Yvonne and Orel. So uh, they're good records, though. No, they are good albums. They're, they're great. They're great musicians. And, uh, yeah. So that's why, in a way, I'm I'm kind of hoping that the prize gives them more exposure in some way. Uh, you know, uh, Morgable gets the rub from it yeah well that's that's the whole purpose of doing this so yeah all right everybody thanks for watching uh us here on ranking the albums on sea tranquility visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time stay tuned uh, a week from today rich catino and i will be ranking the catalog of christian metal act striper so that's coming up next sunday and of course uh Stay tuned tomorrow for the Hudson Valley Squares and the Prog Seat on Tuesday. Wednesday is new album review day here on the channel. Thursday, while it will be Thanksgiving here in the States, uh, we will have the Monsters Den for you. We'll be recording that a little bit early during the week. And uh, Friday morning at the Fun House with Martin Popoff will also be happening on Friday. So uh, stay tuned for all that. UK Connection on Saturday. And of course, uh, back here, ranking the albums on Sunday. So uh, for Ken Golden and George Lemay, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit that like button before you leave. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow on the Hudson Valley Squares. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.